Okay, the time's come for us to turn our attention to open shortest path first. Now, what I want to do is I want to illustrate a network infrastructure that we're going to use to bring up adjacencies. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have CSR1 connected to CSR2 in our lab. So, if you're attending the class, connect to the T Labs lab environment. If you're using your own configuration, you're going to need at least two CSRs for the por this portion of the class. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use gigabit, zero, gigabit one on both ends between these devices. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to configure loopback interfaces. And in keeping with the standard that I've been using, it'll be 183.1.1 slash 32 for the last two octets being for CSR1 and 183.1.2.2 slash 32 for CSR2. The network between these devices will be 10.1.12.0 slash 24, and we'll use dot one and we'll use dot two on either side. Now, this is already set up inside of our environment, but what we do want to do is we want to come in here and we want to run open shortest path first as a routing protocol across these links. So I want to use G01 on both devices, and I also want to advertise both loopback addresses into the routing protocol. So OSPF is going to be the routing protocol of choice, and for the purposes of this configuration, just to demonstrate, like we discussed in the theoretical component, that we only need to have an area zero for full functionality in the event that we have more than one area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin with OSPF area one. So that's going to be the area that we're going to be using in this particular portion of our demonstration. Now what I want to be able to do is I want to engage OSPF and what I want to do is I want to use Wireshark to be able to look at the processes that are going to be taking place. Our primary focus is going to be on what is referred to as the adjacency state machine. Now, the adjacency state machine is part of the process of neighbor discovery, and it's also going to be part of the phases that our OSPF environment is going to move through. Now, what I really want to do is I want to be able to take Wireshark, and I want to be able to capture every piece of information that's going through this process. This may sound basic, but keep in mind, as a direct result of the fact that we have the three sections of the lab, we have, obviously, the troubleshooting section. So we also have the diagnostics. Now this is where I'm focused right now because it's during the diagnostic section that we're going to be seeing traces and traces could be coming from Wireshark. Traces could also be coming from other aspects like the idea of debugs. So the primary tools that we're going to be focusing on is going to remain the same as when we were talking about the distance vector protocols, RIP and EIGRP. So we're going to be looking at debugs, and we're going to be looking at Wireshark traces. And we're going to walk through this entire process from the beginning to the end when it comes to forming a neighbor relationship. And then ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to take a critical look at the link state advertisements as well as the link state updates that are used to exchange them. So what we'll do is we'll dive right into the configuration and we'll go ahead and build out this topology using the T-Labs lab environment that we've been using in class. I'll see you guys in that demo.